How's it going guys? What's up? So before this video starts, we just want to remind you that our funder is now live. We are making a short film called The Hitman and we need all the support we can. So the link down below in the description, please click on it and give anything you can. It doesn't matter how much it is, a euro, anything. It can range from, it's up to you, like there's rewards that we have set as well. So if you gave five euro, you'll get a personal link to our video, oh. to our film. But if you give a hundred euro, oh. here's what you'll get. What? You'll get a private link to the screening. Yeah. You'll get a signed poster by the cast. Oh. You'll also get a personal message from the Dream Factory oh, crew. Sure. And you'll get to work with us on set. Oh, so you bring them out for a day yeah. and you get them to work on set. Yeah, That's amazing. That. You could see all of us in action with the cast and the crew on set. Maybe they can the even be in the background. They could be in it. Oh, if you want to be in the film, all you have to do is donate. So guys, please donate. Link down in below to our funder page. Thank you very much. Enjoy the episode. Thank you. Everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Dare Alright Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, not the worst podcast, just an alright podcast. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely intro. You're so, welcome. there's a few things different. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Um, what is it, Nick? What could you say it is? <laughs> stop! Stop! <laughs> what is it? Um, I sounded like a kid getting bullied. Stop! You sound like Stuart Little when you do that. Insert Stuart Little now. Did you do something with your eyebrows? No, I, I, I've been using this new Nivea cream. Oh, really? Yeah. You've been using beard oil as well. I have, on, on nothing. <laughs> There's this little bit of scrappy beard. Um, I'm belching now on my beard. Um, yeah, but nothing different, is there? No, I can't see anything. We'll, we'll continue with the podcast, yeah. Emily. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, this week, we want to talk about a few things. It's not just the one topic. Um, one... My head shaved. <laughs> I shaved my head. If you don't know it, it's already. If you can't notice from the thumbnail, uh, yeah, I shaved my head, and there's a reason why I shaved my head. Why'd you shave your head? Because my hair was so long, and if I right, picture this. Not good band. band. Good band. Mm. Picture this, right? Here it is. Here's this. Here's this. Here it is, right? Here it is. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I would go over to Tesco's. Okay. And walk over by myself. Right. Or I'd walk to the bus stop to go to college. And the weather hasn't been nice lately. It's only been nice for like three or two days now. Everybody's like, oh, the weather's really good and it's brightening up and up, but it's really, really bad. Right. And I think, but sorry, I know that the hair gets stuck to me face. The fringe came down to here. Mm. And it would stu be stuck to me face. And the wet would get out of it. And if you would have put it in the the beanie, mm. it, then the hair would be all over the place. So your hair was getting in your eyes? The hair was getting in my eyes. Um, even though I'd done my hair and washed my hair, I'd have to put a beanie on. It was blowing in the wind. Because it was blowing in the mm. wind and it would wreck it. And I said, you know what? No more. No more? No more. So you just took the razor? I got the razor. off. But we'll show you. Here is a picture of it before it was shaved like this. And here it is now. Um, Are you happy with it? I'm happy with it now. I like it now. And I actually like this, how short this is. You don't like the locks. I don't like the way your hair is coming out over your ears. And look yeah. at this little bit here. You can like, you <laughs> can right. trim that now. Yeah, no, I don't like that either. But do you know what? Wait, let me tuck that back in now. <laughs> do you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't like that either. But I'd rather like this than what it was. Because it yeah. was. It was very long. It was probably the longest it was ever, was it? No, I've had long hair. But before when I got shaved the first time I'm talking about, and yeah. it was uneven. Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't like it then? No, because it was really, really patchy. Yeah, and I sent... Uh, I FaceTimed James, um, and he's, his lights were off, and he was in bed. Mm. And I goes... I had the phone up to my face, and he goes, All right, buddy. And he goes, All right. And I goes, Do you want to see something? He goes, Yeah, and i done that. Mm. But I said so, something about me... I um, I shaved my head or something. I said something. He started laughing, and then I done that, and he's like, <laughs> and he fucking pissed himself laughing. It was funny. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's difference with my hair and change. And that's what it is. It's a change. You know. It's like a, a sheep that gets sheared for the spring. Thanks. I'm I'm a sheep. Yeah. Thanks. You lost your winter wool. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this, and I'm gonna keep it like this for a while, and probably start growing it back. Now. Really? <laughs> From now on? Yeah, well, I just wanted a shave to kind of start off, you know. But then the whole cycle repeats, it'll get caught in your eyes again. Yeah, but I'll make sure it doesn't, no, because barbers are closed, you see, so yeah. I couldn't go to a barber's, and uh, there's people that I know that are barbers, but they don't have time to cut here, mm. get me, so... Um, <clears throat> so yeah. you had to do it yourself. I, I got me dad to do it. Mm. This is a four all over, and I like it. I like it, and I think it's cool for pictures as well. I when I take pictures. Um, you have a very straight hairline. I don't think so. I think you do. Like, look at that. It goes straight across. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully, it doesn't it doesn't start coming in like this. Imagine that. Look. Looks like Emmett. No. <laughs> That'd be weird. Right, so when well, we're talking about change and so, there's a lot of things that change over mm. year, you know? Yourself, who you are as a person, uh, things change around you. Mm. And I want to get into this topic. So, the, a, a big change and a big effect happened this week in the O'Reilly house. Mm. And it was a sad one. It's a very, it's a sad, um, it's a sad one. And You've experienced this as well, and I don't know if you're going to talk about your experience. It's up to yourself. Well, I want to talk about my experience. Um, we, the O'Reilly family, um, we got it. We have, we had three dogs, and sadly, on the second of March, uh, one of them dogs, uh, Coco, uh, passed away. Um, she was vulnerable, she was prone to take fits, this dog. It was a little small, tiny dog, wasn't she? She mm. was tiny, she was she was brown, area. that's why we called her Coco. Because <clears throat> um, she looked like a bit of Coco. Um, yeah, and that dog, man, brought, even though, yeah, that dog was a lot of fun because you have, you have three dogs, you have Holly, which is the, the mother. You have Molly, which is the more, I would say it was like Bob, but she, Molly's like Bob Marley reincarnated. <laughs> reincarnated. She's just real chill. She's real chill and relaxed and she loves it. Coco on the other hand. Coco would run around the kitchen. The the energy on the dog, you could call it the flash. <laughs> like the dog just ran around and ran around and ran around. And they got really hyper and giddy and so. <clears throat> so what happened was is that on Sunday we noticed there was something wrong with Coco. And she wasn't acting herself and so and we were all talking about it. And then Monday, she took a fit. She took a few fits. And then Tuesday morning, I'm. she took, she started taking fits and we rang the vets and the vets said bring her up and so. But she took a fit that I've never ever seen a person or a dog like react before like that. Yeah. The dog looked straight at me. <clears throat> you, Coco's eyes are like squinty. Yeah. Her eyes were as wide as Penny's eyes. Mm. And Penny's eyes are fucking huge. Yeah. And her mouth was opening. And she was taking a fit. And she was looking straight at me. Going <laughs> like that. Do mm. you get me? Just, you could hear her breathing weird and stuff. Yeah. And I, 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 it was. And Her I didn't breaking. know how to, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't cry. I went. I remember going up to the bathroom and cry, I was starting to cry, but it stopped and I wouldn't. I couldn't. It's like I wouldn't allow myself to cry or something. Yeah. It was weird. Um. So what we done is is that we wrapped her in a blanket, and I had her in the passenger seat. My dad was in the driver's seat, and we had her in a blanket, a blue blanket. Mm. And she got to the stage of she because she kept taking fit after fit. Yeah. And I got to the stage where my dad was saying that she y yelled out a yelp, as on Rah! and the noise of it was oh my god! Yeah. You were literally like, oh my, that dog's in pain. Yeah. So we had to bring up to the vets. The dog was lying in the blanket, and the only thing was moving was the dog's eyes. The, the, the eyes were just looking up around here. Yeah. And just know. looking and just looking around, <clears throat> and you knew that drive was the last drive yeah. and what happened was is that I was sitting here and I was rubbing her and, and relaxing her she didn't take a fit in the car mm. so thank god but I think by the time she took that fit 
I think something. I think she was brain dead or something. I it don't know. It took a toll on her it took body. A, yeah, her body is yeah. so small. It's like two it is. Like it's yeah, tiny. No, yeah. She was a little small Jack Russell, <clears throat> and yeah, it's just the uh, the sh the the fits took the stress toll, and I think yeah. the stress of our body and our heart and our brain. I think it just done something to our brain. Yeah, and she was just lying there, and I don't know. Like I, I'm literally sitting. I was sitting there and I was thinking. Is she still there? Yeah. Or is she brain dead? Yeah. I don't know because she didn't interact. She wouldn't look up. We wouldn't when we were calling her. She, her eyes were looking only out there and was flicking That's back and she forward. Probably didn't have any energy to do anything. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure she probably was afraid to move just in case she took another fit. Yeah. So she was lying there and I was holding her. And I've never experienced death like this. Mm. Like my granddad died in 2007, and I remember. I'll go back to the story of the dog, okay? Um, but I remember my granddad died in 2007 and I remember walking in on the awake and I turned into the sitting room and all I could see was a coffin and from there to there, that's all I seen, I went like that and I looked away and I walked into the sitting room, stood there and my brother Ryan went in with me dad and Ryan looked at him yeah. and then Ryan went down and Joe kissed him and stuff yeah. but I couldn't go in. And when I walked back out, I saw that again. And that I'll always remember that. That, the that just, the just from there to there. And you could see his nose and stuff and all. But I never looked. I didn't yeah. look in him. I never watched him. I, I couldn't. Um, and that was the closest thing I experienced to death. And then the funerals and stuff and all. So that was the only time. And then um, I actually seen there's a neighbour around the estate. Mm. And I walked past the window. Mm. And I seen them in their coffin sitting up because the curtains weren't fully closed. I don't know, what it, but I was like, whoa, that's what, that's what a, a person in the coffin looks like. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it looks like. Um, but that that was my experience before this. But this this is different because even though it's a dog, you could see from the dog's eyes that it was like, like, this is it, like, this is yeah. it. So, me and my dad's sitting there, and I'm holding, I'm rubbing it, and then my dad takes the dog, and my dad's rubbing and saying, you okay, Coco, you okay, Coco? You know what I mean? You, you can see that he was sad, but he was holding yeah. her back. The vet, he brought it into the vet. And what happened was, is that, about 10 minutes later, and this was at Parmistown Vets, and shout out to Parmistown Vets, they done a really good job, because I'll tell you, I'll say why. They came back out, and she, Coco was wrapped in the blanket that we went in with. Mm. And I was so afraid to hold something that's gone, that's yeah. dead. A dead dog or a yeah. dead body. I was terrified. But this sense came over me that it was, it was normal and this is what happens. Mm. And even though the dog is no, long, no longer with us and the dog was dead in the blanket, it's just a sense of peace came over. It's relief for her. It's as relief well, right? yeah. because she wasn't in pain anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. you should have heard that yelp. Oh my yeah. god! And and that's something you'd never forget. The sound no, of that. no. Yeah. And the eyes, I will never forget her looking straight at me. Mm. Her eyes wider than Penny's eyes, and her mouth open, and her jaw was shaking mm. while she was taking the fit. And I remember running up and rubbing her because yeah. I think my dad had her. Do you know what I mean? And like the dog, the dog, we picked up the dog, and the dog pissed. While I was taking a fit, and I was like, "That's it. I think that dog's." Yeah. So that's my me now. Right, bring it to the vets, and I held the the blanket in my arms, and I was sitting in the passenger seat, and my dad was there, and they give you this little bottle, and we were like, "What's that little bottle for?" But we looked at it closer, and they cut off a bit of the hair, they shave mm. off a bit, of, and they put it into a bottle, mm. and it's a nice little, a little memory, right? It's yeah. nice, yeah. And um, so we went back. Um, dug a grave for it, put it in the ground. We made a nice little box. My dad made a beautiful, it was a nice box. Put it in, and she's she's there now. Mm. And I know this sounds fucked up, but for the first night or so, or the first night or the second night, I kept looking out the back mm. at the outgoing. Is she, did she come back to life or she's still in that box? Or mm. She's out there on her own, she's all alone out there on her own. Oh my god! Like yeah. I, I felt like fucking crying, and I was like, "Oh, what happens if like if the yoke didn't work and she's in the box on her own? There's no like, do you know that? But yeah, yeah. but that's not really that's not <laughs> yeah. how it works. You you're trying, me? it's your it's your brain tricking yourself to try and think, oh, what if that actually happened? Or mm -hmm. it's it's not coming to terms with what reality is. I thought that, and my ma came down that night, 
and my ma uh, was like, what happens if the yolk didn't work? And I went, I literally thought of that. Mm. Like, and I didn't even talk to her. And then I was like, how the fuck she think of that? And I thought of that. Yeah. And then, um, sorry, this is nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's out there now. And for the first night, I heard a, like that and I I jumped up off the chair ran out the back door ran over but it was another dog over the other back oh okay see that's the thing my mind and the mind me. is playing tricks on you yeah because you want to believe that the dog's alright she's alright yeah that she's alive yeah. she's alright now yeah but I still have a thought in my head I think it's good that dogs get cremated and then you can put the ashes on the back or something because me personally, if you bury a dog out a back or so or something like that, my brain is thinking in my head, like last night and stuff and all still, and I think about it at night time as well. If I'm sitting in the kitchen and I look out the back, I'm like, she's on her side in that nice little box, wrapped in the scarf. Mm. Do you get me? She's nice, she got placed lovely in it. And she's there on her own. Yeah. She's lying there, but she's not aware that she's there. She's not. She's no longer there. It's a body. It's a body. Yeah. It's not. She's not there anymore. She doesn't yeah. even. Know, she's not dreaming. She's not thinking. But that's me trying to process death, and I'm still trying to do that. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah, and I think because you haven't had much experience with it, it's not. It's like it's hard for everyone to deal with death, but like it's, it's a new feeling <clears throat> to you. Yeah, and it's 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 horrible, and um. I remember we brought her home and we put her down. We had to place her down while well, mm. we digged up a hole and stuff. I didn't do it. Me, you know, me, me dad did it. And my dad took off the blanket to look at her. Mm. And I thought I would have been freaked out. Yeah. Looks like she was asleep. Yeah. It's peaceful looking. Mm. Mm. She, like she was asleep and I was like, oh my God. This is, this is it's normal. It's peaceful. It mm. looks so peaceful. Yeah. And you know me, I've been thinking about death a lot lately even before the dog and I've been sitting there thinking about oh what happens if you you're die you're always fascinated I'm, all, I'm fascinated but I'm also scared of death yeah. but I'm fascinated about how one minute that me and you are talking here and we have a thing going on and you know the likes of that next of all like that person's no longer there that yeah. the, who they are as a person is gone mm. and it's just this this body. body yeah you get me that's the thing of like like you can see your body but it's the personality inside the body that makes us human and makes us all different. Exactly. I think it is. And yeah. that's why I believe like I believe that there's there's I'm I'm half and half with the, the whole of oh when you die you go somewhere else or your body's still here with energy or no you're just dead dead. I'm I'm half and half with no you just die and then but I'm more go I more go towards something with hope. Yeah that there's afterlife yeah that there's afterlife or your energy's still here and you can still go around and see everyone and I don't know your energy's just still here on the on the planet and stuff and in the galaxy in the mm. universe and I don't know and I, I do you know what I, I hope it is but we don't know and that's the one thing that all of us and I mean every single person that's watching right now every single person that we can see in Starbucks right now everybody that's driving by every single person here will experience that but imagine, right, if there was an afterlife and everyone's up there from since the start of time. Yeah. Imagine the chaos that would be going on. Like, think of the likes of all the wars, I think you're put all the leaders, somewhere. All, like, the likes of Hitler and all those people. Well, Hitler's supposed to be there one there. No, but you know what I mean? Like, the likes of everyone that was mm. ever on this earth yeah. is up there. It's going to be jam-packed. The riots that would be happening. Well, come here. I think of it as everybody. I don't know if you've seen this film. Uh, what days may come? No. I want to show you. It's a Robin Williams film, and you're gonna cry. Is that the one where he's up in the clouds? No. He's up. He's in heaven. I think I see it, but I don't. I seen it, but I don't remember it. Right. You haven't seen it. You and I, me I don't. It. No. Yeah, but trust me, you haven't watched yeah. it. Yeah. No, I can't remember. Yeah. Right. You did, and you fell asleep. I can remember now because yeah. I went when I went to a certain bit. You fell asleep, and I was like, "That's," and you were like, Ugh. "And I was like, yeah. this is so important." <laughs> the film is okay, right? But it's the meaning behind it, the story, and spoilers now for anybody, right? Mm. Spoilers and three, Wait, two, but I haven't seen one. This. Oh, right. Don't spoil it for okay. me. <laughs> well, Robin Williams. It's called What May Come. 
Mm. And it's basically Robin Williams and what he goes through and where he goes and mm. it's wow. a it's a good film. I, I'd recommend it if you if you want to watch it. Is what, it watch it. It's fucking heartbreaking. And do you know what? I watched that film and I think it was two days later, or three days later, he passed away, Robin Williams. Oh really? And the stuff he says in it and then he passes away. Yeah. Oh, I can't even get it because it's because what he says and then what he did, he did and stuff yeah. and it's just mad. It's mad. But that would that film's He would have just ago. been following a script though. Yeah. You know. But I know for a fact he knows when he read that script and he's doing that dialogue. I guarantee you this the shit he said, he meant, he meant it. Oh wait, you see this this is mad. This yeah. is mad. But yeah, I wanted to talk about that this weekend and 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 um my experience with Coco yeah. and may Coco rest in peace and some people say it's only a dog it's you know what I mean a dog's their family dog to me and to my family dogs are family yeah. they'll always be family and it's, it doesn't matter if it's not blood or not related you get a dog and you, you make it a part of the family it is you know? part of family yeah. Yeah. and you will always remember yeah. them for that um, but that's my experience anyway mm. you know Um but I have a feeling that you don't want to share your experience, and I that's don't a, think yeah, it, no, yeah. you know that's okay, because um, you're still you can see in the camera that you're tearing up, yeah. So um, we can talk about something else, and I don't know how we're going to segue <laughs> into it. Do you want to pause it for a second? Yeah, hold on. Right, we pause it. We're back. Woo. Now, sorry, that's a little jump cut there. We just had to kind of give it a moment. It yeah. is a sad story, but. Well, every sad story, there does come something good. Because people, if people don't know, also, like yourself, you lost the dog as well. That, like like me, we're yeah. about in the same boat. But, Nicola, tell them something now. Right, I don't even know how to start this story. Just start it, just just <laughs> say it, just say it. Um, okay, so, I suppose it was probably four or five weeks ago. Jesus, that, that long? No, no, since me and my brother were looking... Oh. To get a new dog. Yeah. And so we were looking. And. Um, I suppose he. My brother he kind of had a particular breed in mind. Mm. That he really liked. So he likes the kind of staffy breed. And. Um, the bull terrier kind of breeds. So he was more kind of focused on those. Mm. And we had looked at a couple of adoption websites. And they had some. But they were getting like adopted really really quickly mm. like the amount the the adoption sites have said like this is the most like the least amount of dogs they ever had for adoption because people because of the pandemic people just want well, to hope, have company hopefully they don't hopefully they don't push the dogs away after when it's all over no it, yeah no you, you, do, you will get people like that and say I have work and I can't look after a dog and they bring yeah, it back that's the thing because so many people are at home now they have the opportunity to spend time with their dogs yeah and it's very hard to try and adopt a dog now because there's very little out there. Yeah. And there's no there's no puppies either. Mm. So we were looking for a couple of weeks and he came across um someone who was selling puppies. Mm. And um there's a really sad story behind this because Oh, is that? Well, remember when we when um so the man that was selling the puppies, they weren't his, they were his brothers. Yeah. And his brother was um, dealing with very bad mental health issues. Yeah. So they had to put him... Um, they had to give him treatment and send him away to a mental institute. Yeah. So they were left with the puppies then. Mm. And they couldn't. They already had dogs themselves, so they couldn't look after yeah. his two dogs and the puppies as well. Very painful for taking them off him. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose, you know, for your family, you have yeah. to kind of do stuff like that. Yeah. But, yeah, so he, he got the puppies anyways... And um, my brother got in contact with him and he said he was interested in it. So my parents knew nothing about this. They knew that my brother was looking for a dog. Nicola is a sneaky snake. It's not, it wasn't just me. And our brother is a sneaky snake. Yeah. So I suppose my parents knew that there, we had an interest there in getting a dog. Mm. But I suppose they they were kind of against it. Yeah. You know, especially that type of breed. They, they don't like... Big dogs, or mm. they would have went with the smaller dog. Yeah. 
But anyways, so about four, four weeks ago now, three and a half, yeah. three and a half, four weeks. Yeah, I'd say so. Half, next three, week will be yeah. four weeks. Yeah. So three weeks ago, um, it was a Saturday. Just we were in Dublin. We were here, yeah, and your man had said, right, the puppies are ready to go. Mm. So I got in contact with him, mm. and we arranged, you know, to get one of the puppies. Mm. So me and you took a little road trip, and we were in a five k, by the way. Yeah, letting you know. Yeah. So me and you took a road trip, and um, we seen the puppies. So mm. what? What did you think? You loved one of them. One of them, I loved. It was a proper uh, bull mastiff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna put up a picture right now on screen. Uh, it's called Sea Spot Run, and it reminded me so much of that dog. And I loved that film as a kid. And I think that that's I what I want me to think of. That I'll have to look at that. It's, I can't remember. Uh, people can see it now, but I'll show yeah. you after the podcast. But um, it's a good film. I think you'd like it. You should watch it. I feel like I've seen it, but I can't remember. Yeah, it. It's about a fella and a dog, and he, you know, it's mm. just he runs away and he finds him. So he, yeah, it's, yeah. It's 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 a good dog. Oh, it's a good dog, and it's a good, <laughs> and it's a good dog, and it's a good film. Um. Yeah, so I think I think uh, I think you should watch that film. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, uh, we got to see the puppies, anyways, and we had picked the one we wanted, and she was the runt of the litter as well. Yeah, she was very very small compared to the rest of them. Like she was skinny. She was as very well. skinny. Like you could see all her bones and her spine. And no, everything. not that bad. Yeah, but not it was, not bad, yeah. but it's just because when you're the runt of the litter, you're the last one to get the food if there's any food left over, kind of thing. Yeah. So you're getting nothing really. So yeah, we got her. We brought her back, um, and she's a very like hyper happy, playful puppy. Mm -hmm. And we have her now like three and a half, nearly four weeks. Yeah. And she's after getting so much bigger. She got bigger. Her you can't see her bones. You can't yeah. see yolk. It. She's she's fattened out mm. as well. She's get. She's got. Yeah. She's filled out, and she's also she's getting taller. You can see it as well. And you you thought it was going to be a small. Uh, dog. No, I didn't. No, I never said it was going to be a small dog. I knew she was going to be big, but she's going to be very big. I think. Yeah, she's going like, to be tall. I'm going to love that. She's a cross of a bull mastiff and a staffy. She's going to be tall. And she looks more of a bull mastiff height. Yeah, like she has the very long legs. Like, I remember the first week we had her, she was like at a certain point, her back was like at a certain point on the couch. And now she's over that. So oh. she's getting taller oh. by the week. Yeah. And she's just going to keep And it's on. exciting. It's exciting to start yeah. this new journey with the new dog. And, yeah. You know, and I, I made a short film. And this is weird because we, about three weeks before... Uh, Coco passed away I made a short film called uh, A Good Girl for and college. Coco's a girl yeah and for college and it's about a dog and it's about a boy packing away the dog stuff and you know everything he picks up there's three items and it brings back a memory and so and it's yeah. it's not spoiling the film because you know straight away at the start what it is yeah Um, but it's the build up to what happened yeah. but what happened to us is like the vets and the stuff you know like, yeah. it's just it relates a lot so when I can um. I will share that video, mm. which is um, when I'm allowed. Um, I'll probably start. I'm, it's, it goes on for three minutes, so I might play it before we get into a podcast one of the weeks. Yeah. Um, before, yeah, before the podcast or starts. Even put much. it at the end of this. Oh, you, I can't put it. Sure. I can't put it in yet. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's mad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So you're saying the dog and it's back and it's yeah. She's getting so much bigger and yeah. We brought her. Ho I br brought her home the first day, and. <sighs> To tell you, my heart was literally racing, <laughs> is an understatement. Yeah. Um, so my parents got home and they freaked and they were like, what is happening? What is this? Yeah. Like, Because Nicola didn't tell them. No, they did Horn, not know. Our brother, Horn, our brother, that she just went out, got the dog and I was like, if they ask, I was not a part of this. <laughs> I just went with you. Do they not, already know your I don't want your ma and da. They already knew. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like that Dublin fellas are nothing but trouble. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, we brought her home and they freaked out the first night, but after that they fell in love with her and they love her so much. Do they like yeah. her now? Like, no, and they can play see, like, yeah. like she, because she's a puppy, she's a bit nippy at times, mm. and there's certain times during the day where all she wants to do is bite. Do you want to tell them what she done to your dad? Oh, um, the first, <laughs> the first weekend that she was there. 
um, obviously she was play fighting or play biting mm. and her tooth got caught in like say the corner of your nail where your nail meets your skin and it got caught in my dad's finger and apparently it went down to the bone it was that dramatic and it was bleeding I doubt whatever. it went down to the bone I think. I don't know I seen it's it and it didn't look that bad yeah he's probably messing yeah because he's always messing but there. that's the thing like because she has very sharp teeth and she's a puppy all she wants to do is bite and if she goes after your laces she takes her, your whole foot in your mouth and bites it and it's not just the laces she goes for the whole foot oh no so yeah like they say after about six months they'll grow out of that biting phase well hopefully anyway um, you don't yeah. want a big dog running around <laughs> trying to bite and I want to see what she's like with me and Penny yeah she met me and Penny and at the start me and Penny were kind of wary of her and they didn't really want to mm. and then Penny started playing but then Penny took to her yeah. me is still a bit Oh, Mia's is always going to be like that she's back yeah. off she's a bit and she nips and she does that she's like yeah, yeah. But pe- whereas Penny will just jump in and play yeah and the two of them would play and stuff yeah. um, I think your dog because there's no puppy places open um, yeah. because we used to bring Mia we brought Mia and, and a bit about Penny but you so brought Penny more to me yeah but there's not really that kind of service mm, and Mia would run in and at the start she'd hide behind us and now, and now she literally just goes out and she she just does she, her own thing and she, she'll just yeah. wander around if, with if, dogs. now she does like I, sp- I spit across I'm like a waterfall I literally spit <laughs> now Mia does like some dogs and she'll play with them and yeah. sniff them but sometimes she a will a lot of dogs she doesn't no As, yeah I think when you have a dog off the lead like running around the park they'll just run around but when they're on the lead and they see another dog because mm. they can't get off and over to it yeah. they kind of bark and yeah. a little bit more Yeah, because they're just they're just trying to see each other I think yeah. well I think that's it for this week because that's about 30 minutes now um, yeah so anyway um, thanks very much for watching this week's episode of the All Right Podcast and uh, yeah Nicola do you want to ask them anything like we should be asked them to interact or? I think if if everyone could do this one thing everyone that's watching right now hmm. hit the subscribe button wow. please wow that's a good one yeah because yeah. more subscribe more likes Equals more opportunities for us. Yeah, exactly. And maybe one day we can get into that studio. Because that's what... So yeah. If you have more subscribers and more likes and, you know... You um, proper setup. You, you can, we can yeah. afford a proper setup then. Yeah. So, yeah. So, hopefully you do. Um, so, yeah, guys. Thanks for watching the RA podcast. Um, this is episode 80? I think so. Wow. Mm. Only 20 more. 20 more weeks. Till 100. Till 100. That's uh, That's mad... <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so there you go. So remember, guys, it's not the best podcast. It's not the worst podcast. It's just the All Right Podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. Check out all our social medias down below. Subscribe, like, comment. What would you like us to talk about? And peace. Bye. Bye.